So we are already inserting into a new contact table that we created inside of our SQLite database. The next thing that we have to do is read from the contacts page, because of course, eventually what we're going to do is every single time we are here on the contacts page, display to the user all of their contacts. Now, the best way or the best place to start to read in this database is when we navigate to this contacts page. So this would be, of course, the first time the app is opened. Because if you remember, the contacts page is going to be the first page to where we navigate. Thanks to us setting that page as the root of the navigation page. So that's the first time when we open the application. But also, if we from the contacts page navigate to the main page and then navigate back, we want to read the database again in case we added new contacts from the main page. Which means that we have to figure out a way to know whenever we are navigating to the contacts page. And there is actually one very useful method coming directly from the content page. So the contacts page is inheriting a virtual method that we can override that is called on appearing. As its name suggests, on appearing is going to be executed every single time the application is displaying this page. So when this page is appearing to the user, it is in here where we want to read the table. Now, very similarly to what we did to insert, we're going to need a SQLite connection. And it is very important that we use a using statement so we don't have to manually call the close method every time. So I create a new connection in here that is going to be connecting to the same file path or using the same file path that we already have on app. And through the connection, we will be able to read. Now, we already created the table from the main page. However, I want you to think about it. The first time we navigate here to the application, it is the contacts page, the one that is going to be displayed before the main page. And so the first time at least, the unappearing is going to be called way before we click the save button, where the contact table is being created which means the first time there is no table to be read, which means that we should actually create the table in here. So we're going to be creating it in the same way. This is a contact table and I need a using directive in here and I'm just calling the create table here as well, which means that I will now be able to read from it. So I will just get a variable called contact to be from con and call the table method. The table method is also going to tell me which table I want to read or ask me which table I want to read. I can tell it inside of these angle brackets. And just like this, notice the contact is going to be a table query. Now what I can do is call the to list method and for me to be able to use the to list method, I will explain about it in just a second. I will first need a using directive to system.link. And so system.link is going to provide me with a to list method. Now what this to list method is going to do is grab the query that I'm making to the table and turn it into a list. And so notice contact is now a list of contacts. So very easy to read from the table. Our contacts variable is now going to contain all of the contacts that we have inside of the table. Now, before moving forward to the next section and start to display these contacts, I want you to know something. Yes, we are creating the table kind of like twice in here. One, when we want to read from it, 
and another one every single time we want to insert to it. Now don't worry, if SQLite sees that we are trying to create a table that already exists, it is simply going to ignore the execution. And it's going to be very efficiently done. So this is not really having any impact in the efficiency of our application. It is a good practice to do the creation of the table. After all, if it already exists, it's not going to be created again or deleted or anything. And it's not really going to impact how our application works. So we are now reading from the table. Let's go ahead and test this out. I am going to add a breakpoint in here, which means that the first time this breakpoint is hit, if I don't add any more elements, any more contacts, this list of contacts should have one contact inside. So the time of the truth, let's go ahead and test this out. And if everything goes correctly, very quickly, right at the beginning of the application, we should hit the breakpoint, inspect the contacts variable and see that indeed there is one element in here of type contact. And if we expand it, we see the exact same text that I just inserted in the previous lecture. And of course, if I were to keep running this and create a new one, let's create a test one in here. Let's just write test in everything. After all, I'm not going to be making any evaluation to see if this is actually an email or not. So let's just save this. Of course, I hit the breakpoint. I see that this is correctly saved. So let's just remove that breakpoint now. Now, notice that as soon as I head back, the unappearing is executed again. And now the contacts variable has two contacts. The new one that I have just inserted, notice, has an ID of two, so the auto increment works, and it is right here inside of this list which means that we are also successfully reading from the table, which means that we are ready to start displaying the elements inside of this interface. We don't have that functionality yet, so starting in the next lecture, we are going to be taking a look at list views and how list views are going to easily allow us to display lists like the one we have right here in the form of the contacts variable inside of the interface.